Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. With the elections finally behind us, what are the priorities for the new administration and how should it respond to these? Jen Screamer joins me to talk about what should drive the president and his new team during the first 100 days in office. Hi, Terence. Nice to know. South Africans have been forced to endure a very difficult period over the past few years. Were these difficulties reflected in the election campaign and in the results now emerging? I think it's a case of yes and no. So yes, in the sense that corruption was a key theme right throughout the campaign, especially for the opposition, but also for the Af African National Congress in the sense that the new president, uh, Sura Maposa, who was elected in Nazrek, uh, was able to show some of the efforts he was ma making to clean up corruption. So it didn't become just a one-way traffic in terms of uh, the opposition using that as a stick to hit the ANC. I think it's in some ways reflected in the results and the ANC has dropped given the dismal government's performance and the corruption over the last number of years. And, uh, but it hasn't dropped to the point where the opposition was able to take the, the gap. Um, and I think a mandate has been given to Sura Ramaphosa with around this 57, 58 percent uh, that if people want to give the, uh, his administration, I think he's, he's popular, with uh, more popular in his party, a chance to prove that they can redeem themselves and can deliver again. So I think it, is a co it was a combination of uh, that there was uh, definitely a signs that uh, the challenges were reflected in this election, but I don't think the opposition, the populism of the EFF wasn't adopted as in many other jurisdictions around the world, we've seen very populist votes in many countries, wasn't really, didn't gain the traction that it could have maybe uh, 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 gained. And then the DA, I think, failed to take um, that gap that was left gaping uh, wide open of corruption because of some of their own internal challenges. So I think what we've, what we, the, our real outcome here is a, a mandate for reform that led by the African National Congress. What are the key issues facing the new administration and what are the immediate priorities? Well, the key issue is to reignite the economy in a way that we start uh, creating jobs again. We know that uh, this triple scourge of poverty, uh, inequality and unemployment sort of prevails and it's got worse over the last few years. And uh, to address that, we really need to get onto a higher growth path. Growth doesn't deliver everything. But without growth, you can't even begin to tackle the other two scourges. Uh, well, you won't get the employment, and without employment, you won't uh, deal with poverty or inequality. So I think really that is the pressing priority. Um, and then obviously the immediate issue for the administration is going to be about the appointment of the cabinet and what that cabinet is going to look like in, to, in composition. We know there's a clamor in society for a more streamlined cabinet and one that looks like it can govern cleanly. So uh, I think much of the attention will shift from the elections now to both what the, comp the, the makeup of the cabinet in terms of how many um, ministers there will be as well as who those people will be and I think everyone will be paying attention to whether the, 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 faction, the factional politics in the ANC plays out in that decision making. I think that it would probably be naive to think that there, it won't at all, but I think on the key ministry at least, and I, th I include the uh, f finance and whatever the economic cluster is going to look like um, uh, in terms of the new look cabinet, I think if those are not uh, key appointments for reform or, or reform minded, I think there could be a backlash, but I think uh, we are going to see in those positions uh, that the factional politics is kept out, but whether it's entirety of the cabinet, uh, I, I think it would be naive to expect that. What needs to be done during the first 100 days to start reigniting growth in South Africa? Well, there's some burning platform issues and there's some low-hanging fruit. And I think on the burning platform issue, it remains Eskom. We know we went through the load shedding period ahead of the election. Uh, it was very confidence sapping and uh, very worrying for business and for the big mantra of the reform-minded uh, people within the ANC, which is all about getting this economy, getting investment back into this economy without stable electricity supply um, and without keeping cost, uh, prices under control, that's going to be very, very difficult to attract uh, investment. 
this remains a real problem uh, for the uh, for the administration and for Silver Ramaphosa's uh, presidency, because the uh, the interventions taken till now, which includes the tariff increases, which were fairly unpopular, um, and the 23 billion rand a year, possibly for 10 years, injection from National Treasury into Eskom, are not going to be enough to turn uh, Eskom around. Financially, it's in dire straits and other interventions are going to have to be taken. Operationally, we can see there has been some stabilization, but those plants have been run too hard for too long and the new projects have been delayed. Uh, so there's going to, there's still always going to be the threat of load shedding. That's a burning platform and major attention has to, has to be given to that. And it's going to involve, it's going to have to involve a very creative thinking to get ourselves out of it and hopefully not just short-termist uh, bailout that leads to another bailout in a few years' time. We need a fundamental change at Eskom. Then there's the low-hanging fruits, and I think they're uh, obviously getting this um, mining economy pumping again, uh, getting the, uh, the, s the system of licensing, sorting out the mining charter issues. If we can do that, I think it's, it's still an important area where uh, investment uh, can come back into South Africa. Then, uh, then there's the obvious point around spectrum, the broadband spectrum, and needing to get that licensing process moving and doing it in a way that crowds in new competition and hopefully lowers prices across uh, data. And then tourism being the other one, where if we can sort out this, uh, these uh, issues around visas and make the process of coming to South Africa uh, that much more easy, uh, as we see with the pilots around the e-visa with New Zealand, we need to start broadening that across to other sectors. And then I suppose we, over that first hundred days, some political vision uh, needs to uh, come into place, a political compact that involves government, business and labour, that deals with not only these short-term uh, low-hanging fruits and burning platform issues, but some of the more medium-term uh, growth issues and we really need to build a political compact or consensus um, um, as South Africans again, that we have a vision and we're going to start moving in that direction. And it's going to be interesting to see what platforms are used, whether it's the, f uh, the formal NEDLAC process, or whether it's the public-private growth initiative, or whether it's other fora that we, we don't know of, whether, where there's some sort of social consensus built around how we're going to reignite this economy in a job-rich way. Um, and there's a number of transitions that are happening in various sectors. Manufacturing has to deal with the fourth industrial revolution, as do other sectors, so does finance. But there's a transition in uh, energy, there's a transition uh, in the digital economy that have, to, that have serious risks with them. They, they come with serious risks, as well as opportunities. And we need to, as a society, get our head around how we're going to capitalize on these big uh, mega trends of energy transition of with industrial revolution in a way that deals with our triple scourge of poverty, uh, inequality and unemployment, which ultimately, if it's not addressed, is going to be very destabilizing. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.